Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So a few months ago on April Fools, we did a YouTube video giving really bad advice on how to become a content creator as a joke. And we thought it would be fun and responsible to make a response video to that video, giving proper advice and tips that we personally use when we create content and we produce for other clients and so on. So we have the video here. By the way, just in case you check it out first, we're gonna wait. We have the video right here. We're gonna like watch it through and we're gonna like stop after each tip and we're gonna like respond to the, what we think is a more appropriate tip than what was said here. And cut. Hey, I'm Dan. If you're looking to be the best filmmaker ever, follow these tips. Boring background, zoom in to create more depth of field. Does it look good? Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so for this first tip, uh, we want to we wanted to give we wanted to do a play on uh, when the background is boring. A good idea is to always zoom in so you can separate the subject from the background a lot better and get a blurred background. But here is but here we just zoomed in without pulling back. I think the effect to actually work properly, you want to pull back the camera and the subject if you can, so you can get even more separation from the background. Yeah, I mean, choosing the right focal length really has a big play into this too, because um, your situation where you just said with the talent, like you would bring the talent forward and then you would, uh, keep the camera where it is, bring the talent forward on a, a lower focal length. Like let's say we're on like a 24 or 35. So if the talent's closer to the lens, um, we would have that more depth separation versus if we were at like a hundred millimeter, we'd have a lot more compression and um, we could really just get even more crazy with the background separation. But um, it really depends on the environment you're in, but that is a good rule of thumb. So if you're really wanting to get that shot to look, have more separation, think in layers. So, f uh, subject, foreground, background, and then really kind of like dig into your environment and try to maximize the opportunity to get the most depth. If you can take your time and like try different things, as Dan said, like I said, pull the camera and the subject. Maybe if you have a wider lens, pull, just pull the subject closer to the camera, if you can still have a good amount of space and keep them in the frame pretty wide while still blurring out the background. Like there's different ways that you can do it. If you are doing an interview shoot, I think two lenses to have in your kit or two focal lengths you really wanna have is something that can get you around a 35 and then something that's a little more compressed like an 85. So I'm a big fan of like full frame sensors. I think 85 is almost like, it's a lot. You don't need to go that far. You can make a 35 look great. But with Super 35 and MFT, sometimes having that 85 millimeter is really what's required to really get the most separation out of your shot. So um, think about that, but those are two focal lengths that um, really do well with interviews. Definitely. All right, let's go to the next tip. Always make sure to interact with every, and I mean every filmmaker coach you see on your socials. Stop scrolling if your video business isn't making a billion dollars a month. ka -ching! So have you ever gotten any like <laughs> coaching, filmmaking coaching ads on Instagram? Yeah, I, not as many as you because I don't engage with them. <laughs> I but, had to just see the process. Uh, I, I had to like just engage with one and see, I think was it like five minutes after I engaged one? I got no, a call. It wasn't even that, it was like 20 <laughs> seconds. I got a call immediately. I was like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with wanting to learn and investing in, in online education. I think it's I think there's a lot of great stuff out there. But if someone is reaching out and they're they're guaranteeing you sales and they're guaranteeing you a way to make money, um, just be wary because it's not always a cut and dry method of how to profit in this industry. I would say while this is obviously an extreme, like we kind of took it to the, the extreme with the billion dollars a month, uh, they do guarantee you like, if you're not making this or if you're not making that, and they all have these methods. So those are kind of marketing MLM strategies that I personally don't believe in and I try to stay away from. And um, I normally, what I like to do instead is if someone's successful and I'm following a director or a producer that I aspire to have clients similar to, or I aspire to have a level of work that's similar to their quality, I'm just gonna reach out. I'm gonna say, hey, big fan of your work. Um, I'd love to jump on a set sometime and be a PA for you. Or if you ever need any help with producing or logistics, or if you ever need extra crew, I make sure I bring that up. Like we all, 
forget we all have specialties and um, you know just highlighting your specialties what stands out and um, that's personally the best way I've found to learn from others and uh, to get advice about how to grow is just to, to ask and um, you'd be surprised man most creative directors and producers like if you send them a DM and you're like I love your work how like what was this like they're gonna respond i mean i remember remember when i introduced you to the uh director for some of the most popular serial commercials we watch as kids oh, i showed yeah. you the ig page yeah um he's created some of the ads that i was inspired from like the age of 10 to want to make commercials and uh you know i I've, I've literally i've just asked that guy questions on instagram and uh, he responded and answered the questions and i I think that's an example of just like, don't be afraid to ask. But, um, you know, unless the person has like some unreal credentials, it's really iffy if they're selling an online course. If you're shooting outside, don't worry about NDs. Just lower your ISO and your highlights will look great. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, so this, yeah, uh, yeah, you can you can nerd out on this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's so many things wrong with that scenario. Um, you know, every camera is different, but most of the modern cinema cameras that are affordable don't have internal NDs, and uh, a lot of new content creators come into the space and they simply adjust their shutter and their ISO when they're outside, and they don't think about neutral density filters and. Really what a neutral density filter is, is to, to maintain the same uh, cinematic look that you've aspired to have throughout your entire project, even when you go outside where there's a magnitude of light. So maintaining shutter angle, frame rate, those are things that are you wanna keep consistent unless the story or the project requires a change. So when we don't have NDs, while I'd obviously rather scroll, roll my shutter to the absolute max and lower my ISO if I had no other option. The real solution here is to pack some NDs with you. And um, NDs are not all created equal. So a circular filter, if you're gonna go the circular route with photo lenses, you know, variable NDs are more popular and more common. Unfortunately, variable NDs are gonna have color cast. The color cast isn't always easy to get out in post. Um, we have some that lean more green. We have some that lean more magenta. Um, and then obviously when you close all the way down on it, they sometimes have the X pattern, which is normal for the variable ND. Um, the ultimate way to get true minimal color, if any alteration, is to go with uh, hard stops that would go into your map box. Yes, that is actually a reason to have a map box. Um, so we found that most of our commercials, we do rent higher end ND filters and um, the color cast is minimal and it makes a dramatic difference. So if you're wanting to maintain a, um, an open aperture and uh, you're wanting to be outside, multiple stops of ND are required and um, that's the actual way to expose a shot. Next tip. Always remember the correct terminology for camera movements. Pan, tilt, dolly, in and out and so on. All right, pan up. Uh, can you pan in a little bit? Can you pan to the right? Nice. This is so funny because it's a very niche, niche joke. Cause like, it's haven't even happened to me where like, there's obviously like, there's different ways of saying camera movements, but most people, especially clients tend to just say pan at everything, pan out, pan down, which is not the right money. And I've done it as well. Um, but it's a good rule of thumb to like, just try your best to like learn terminology for each department if you're working with a team. Like it's good to like just be able to like communicate in a more uh, efficient way with your sound team, with your camera team, but it's good to as a director or as a producer to like know how to communicate with each department properly. Make sure you get the mic as close to talent as possible without getting in the shot. My favorite one. Obviously, like this is an extreme uh, uh, to hit the joke, but there's different ways that you can try to hide a mic and keep it as close as possible. 
a good thing, especially when you're working with someone maybe, is ask for a frame line and make sure that they like tell you like how low you can go. As, try to go as low as you can without like getting in the frame. And keep in mind like when if they change the lens or zoom in for the next shot, like try to like get even closer then. Because it might sound great there, but if you can get a little closer, it'll help with uh, the noise in the background. So I think a good thing to keep in mind, if you can't boom or you don't want to work with a boom, a good thing is to use is also lavs. Lavs are just a little cable you attach to your receiver and you can like clip it on a shirt, on a jacket, on a tie. We also use double-sided tape. Our Cos 11D has a little holder for the mic that you just slip on and then you can put a double-sided tape on one side and then just tape it onto the chest of the talent and it just hides it perfectly and you don't have to worry about the clothing rustling as they're moving so it's, it's a great way of getting the best audio you can yeah i've really enjoyed using that i mean i think just the visibility component is yeah. just a big thing i think when you stop seeing a lot of in your interviews you really realize how much nicer it is and yeah. you know look great boom placement doesn't always have to require a a sound uh, yeah. team. Like we have a grip head that holds our boom pole. And um, even when it's just me or it's two of us, we can easily attach the boom pole to the grip head. And uh, instead of bringing a big clunky mic holder, which we've done in the past, like this is a really easy way to, uh, to have boom. And you can choose, you know, you run two channels and you have your boom and you have your lav and whatever sounds the best, um, you know, wins. And that's always been great. And then, we decide that in post. This also applies more to like narrative work and high-end commercials or uh, client interviews and documentaries. Because I think like nowadays in YouTube and content creation, people don't mind hiding the mic. People don't mind like just clipping on a shirt. I seen a lot of fitness people just clip it on their hats and just go and that works great. But yeah, those are actual tips to becoming a better filmmaker, a better content creator. I hope you enjoy them and we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe right now.